they look for color. In geology, certain minerals tint rocks in very specific ways, as if they were discreetly signing their own presence. Yellowish soils from iron oxide, greenish tones from copper minerals, dense dark spots from magnetite. All of this is usually a sign of gold-bearing areas. And when I find bluish or grayish hues, I immediately think of kimberlites, those deep rocks that can carry diamonds. It's as if the earth leaves small colored clues before showing the final prize, and I've learned to respect these signs. Color, on the other hand, reveals profound processes, colossal pressures, chemical transformations, minerals that have slowly combined over millions of years. When I walk along a newly exposed embankment and see that strong, earthy yellow, I already know that the natural railway is near heavy minerals. When I find a bluish-gray fragment in the middle of ordinary soil, my heart races. It's a typical sign of kimberlite. The first thing I always recommend is observing exposed riverbanks, especially after rain, because the water reveals layers that are normally hidden. On natural rock walls, I like to look at the horizontal bands, because each line tells a different geological story. And of course, even a backyard can hide clues, especially in regions with a history of mining. The secret is to walk slowly, let your eye get used to the nuances, and notice what stands out. If a color catches your eye, don't ignore it. It could be the beginning of a great discovery.